Well, listen, I'm going to bring this next guy up, who I first got an inkling of. I, I get to travel occasionally across the United States, this great land of ours, in order to, to work as a comedian. And I, I got uh, first to hear about this guy while I was in Indianapolis. Indiana, yes, indeed. He's a Hoosier. And he's here for you right now. He's a funny guy. He's been in the Boston area about six months, and it's a pleasure to have him here. Why? Because he's a damn good comic. Somebody I know you're sure to like. Please, ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Mr. Matt Graham. Mike has had a bad week. I pity you, Mike. Thanks, Matt. It's been... Uh, it's been no picnic for me either. Many hassles I've run into since I've come to the big city. Yesterday I bought a cuckoo clock at an army surplus store. Last night at the 10, the bird chirped 2,200 times. <laughs> 11 rolled around, it wasn't even finished. <laughs> Silly me, finally thought to unplug it. One of the many insane purchases I've made lately. I'm sure you've all played Trivial Pursuit, am I correct on this? May I ask by applause, anyone here purchase one of these add-ons you can get? Uh, we can get more questions. Sports, baby boomer. Stay away from this one. I bought the Trivial Pursuit All-Star Philosophy Edition. <laughs> 6,000 questions, no answers. <laughs> Thank you for applauding my private hell. <laughs> this game takes far too long to play. You thought Monopoly was bad. Anyone know how many angels can dance on the head of a pen? It's all I needed to win. I do like to spend a certain portion of every show talking about my childhood, which you probably think I'm still experiencing from looking at me. That's understandable. I'm 21, I look much younger. It creates certain inconveniences. I can't go to the mall. Everybody thinks I'm lost. <laughs> so I don't get out shopping much. I do talk about my childhood. Uh, it was not rough in a lot of ways, but it was in some ways. I was a sickly kid. Never got any sympathy from my parents over this. I was reminded of how bad it was when the other night I was watching the news. They had a report, and I'm going to ask you to applaud if you heard about this, on some parents who make their kids pedal exercise bicycles to make enough electricity to watch television. <laughs> People always chuckle, but it's the absolute truth. I know someone's heard about it. My parents did something like this. They made me pedal a stationary bicycle to power my dialysis machine. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> Sickly kid, everything I did as a kid was related to illness. My little league team was sponsored by a pharmacy. <laughs> we had to wear childproof caps. <laughs> Those things are such a hassle after every game parents pushing down and twisting. <laughs> I wore that hat for five years, a little longer than I wanted to. Father was a very frugal man, exemplified by certain things. We had a rule in our family, a pretty typical rule. That the, <laughs> thanks, you're helping out. It's a fly. All right. Well, I was talking about a rule in our family. Rule in our family, the kids took turns doing dishes after every meal. Pretty typical rule. But my father played favorites, and whenever it's my little sister's turn to do the dishes, my dad would break down and pay the check. <laughs> Not easy with a frugal father. And another. I can show you just uh, how cheap he was if you'll follow my thoughts closely. But I mean closely. You know how you look at a light for a long time, much like I'm doing. This is theater. <laughs> you look at light for a long time, then you look away. You can like still see the light in front of your face just as though you were looking at it. That's how my family put lights in the Christmas tree. We'd all. <laughs> 
We'd all stare at a sun lamp, then simultaneously turn and look at the tree. It's a beautiful, yeah, it's great, Dad, thanks. Why do your parents take you on vacations when you're too young to remember? <laughs> you know, they do this. By the age of seven or eight, I was very bored with Indianapolis. I asked my father about a vacation. He says, well, when you were one, we went to Montreal. When you were two, we went to Florida. I'm just going to lie to my kids, save the money. <laughs> you know. I was talking about all the problems, a lot of problems. Last Friday, my roommate sent me out to get some canned fish because we were having some Catholic survivalists over for dinner. <laughs> As I was coming up the stairs to our apartment, I tripped and all the groceries rolled down the stairs except for a can of salmon which fell up the stairs. <laughs> Unusual appearances. A lot of minerals in my water, in the city water area. So I found a solution. I went out and bought one of these water filters and put it on my faucet. It uh, works better than I had anticipated. It's filtering out the oxygen. <laughs> I have pure hydrogen coming out of my tap now. <laughs> and a light, the other night I left my faucet dripping, came home, my apartment was floating like the Hindenburg. <laughs> I guess it's bound for Lake Hurst, New Jersey. I'm no wiser. <laughs> Interesting week, though. The other day, I threw a boomerang at a pitchback. <laughs> as far as I know, it's still going. I can only trust mock physics. I was accosted this morning at my door by a gentleman who wanted me to become a Jehovah's Witness. He was very overbearing. He had a subpoena. <laughs> I've got to take assertiveness train. I don't know. You probably think after uh, viewing my act that I'm somewhat twisted. Maybe you're thinking in more extreme terms. <laughs> so you're right. Uh, come by it honestly, my parents are both institutionalized. My mother's schizophrenic, but I prefer to think of her as a people person. <laughs> my father's manic depressive. He just sent me a postcard. It said, having a wonderful time, wish I were dead. <laughs> Thanks a lot for listening. Welcome back to Matt Brown, Mr. Indianapolis.